I like. I like. Awala mo ifunaya Jesus ikwala mo. Awala mo ifunaya Jesus ikwala mo. Awala mo ifunaya Jesus ikwala mo. Okay, good morning everybody. It's been a while. It's your girl Sandy. Yes, it's been a while. And I've really missed the camera. I've missed the light and I've missed you. So um straight to the point. This morning really don't have so much time and I don't want this video to be very long. So I I want to talk about something that concerns ladies. It also concerns the guys. But if you know me too well, I'm a ladies lady. <laughs> I love my ladies very well. No, I'm not being um, gender biased now. But I love my ladies very well. So um, if you're a guy, yes, you can listen. But this is solely to my ladies out there. Especially my single ladies out there. So something came to me yesterday when I was at home in the morning. And... Um, I felt the urge to really share it and I know this will bless someone's life so I'm not scared so even if it's just one person I'm so happy and I'll be so happy that it will really bless your life I want you to listen and meditate on these words of course the words are coming from the scriptures none of these words are my words yes so meditate on the scriptures and let's see how god will help us praise god so okay and I, I said praise god i'm feeling like i'm preaching right now <laughs> but please i'm not preaching i just want to talk okay so um yes the message is to my single ladies out there you know i don't really have a title for this i came up with the title but uh, my husband was like ah oh. so i said let me just talk um we live in a world where the single wants to get married and the married wants to be single that's a very is a very misnomer like how can i be single wanting to get married and how can i be married that what's to go back to say goodness ah there is a comma somewhere but maybe because we don't understand the reason for those things those two states singleness and marriageness <laughs> singleness and being married don't mind me maybe that's why we feel that we are not complete you know as a single lady beautifully i've, ne I've never been a family person I've never been a marriage person, actually. Like, ask my friends. I always tell them, ah, uh, when you marry, I'll come and be your bridesmaid. Ah, life of a party. What? I'm going to be there, hailing everybody. So I've always wanted to marry at the age of 35 because I just felt like, oh, God, Sandra, you have, you have, you have so many things to do. I wanted to be a boss lady. I wanted to be on my own. I wanted to have my car, my house. But I just had this mentality. I didn't want to be dependent on any guy ah so many things but here i'm here i am <laughs> married before 37 so but that's a different ball game altogether what i'm saying or, or this message is to the single ladies that feel you know there's nothing good in being single no that's not true if there is nothing good in being single god would have just created all all of us married you'd have created us in pairs you know, you'd have just created me, created my husband, say, oh yeah, we'll be born together. Mar in fact, we, in fact, we'll come from the same womb so that we will not make mistake. Ticket. But God created man. He made them single first. So there's a reason. And God does not make mistake. There's a reason God created us single first. So even if we came from the same womb, uh, we are twins from the same womb. We can't get married. We are, God treats us as singles first. Even our parents treat us as singles first. The, 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 the whole, um, nature treats us as singles first before we go on to getting married. So there is a reason. Maybe because we don't know the reason why we are single. That's why people just sit down and just wish they were married for the wrong reasons though. 
yes and when you get married and you that I, I i liked my singleness so hey are you serious is this what is all uh, marriage is all about and all that so let's go back to the scriptures like i said the words are not my words they are words from the scriptures from genesis when god created we can read it we can we know the creation story so i'll just picking out some things when god created the animals created the birds he created sun you know all those things he made all those things by spoken words when it came to man he made man in his own image you know when we talk about man god sees all of us as man not men now man so it's it's a bit wrong for us to say God created Adam and made and created Eve out of Adam. No, God created man. If you check um, Genesis, read Genesis very well. The Bible says God created man. So his mind was when he told um, when he said, come, let's make man in our own image. He didn't say, come, let's make Adam like a separate human being then we want to make sandra come let's make sandra we want to make eve come let's make eve no come let's make man in our own image so he made man and i'm going to be talking about four points uh, um, as regards to you being single he made man and the bible says he puts man in the garden of eden First of all, I want to say that women, we are all, we, we are all man. Let me not say men. Man. The man God created. You are the man. Whether you're a female or you're a male, you are the man. The only difference is that as a lady, you are the man with the womb. So it means that everything that God puts in the man is inside of you. And every instruction he made, at the beginning of creation or oh, he yes every structure he made at the beginning of creation is for you after sin after um um the disobedience he now st decided to treat us as separate entities okay so the man you have to toil so the woman you're going to a uh, child um uh, a bird to be blah 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 to get but when he created he said he made man, the Bible said he made man and put him in the Garden of Eden. So that was everything he taught of, he put it in the man. So when he made Eve, he took a, um, a bone out of Adam and made Eve. It means that the man he made, everything he puts in the man, also he puts in the female. I don't know if you get everything he puts in the man, he puts in the female. If not, he would have gone again to get a new clay, gotten another thing. Say, okay, let us put a different characteristic in this another man or in this woman. Let's put another character. See, um, um, we've made the man different. Let's make the woman different. No, he removed something from the man and puts in the woman and added an extra which is the womb so it means that like i said every instruction god gave the man the man is just like a prototype so as you're a lady you know we've had so many things you know the man is supposed to do this the man is supposed to do this the man is supposed to do this hey god's instruction is not a respecter of gender God is God's instruction, God's blessing is not a respecter of gender. The only difference is that the duty God gave to man and uh, God gave to man and to us, our own is in a different light. Let's see. So Genesis chapter one, verse eight. Like I said, I'm going to be mentioning four um, four things. I'm going to be mentioning four things that we need to understand as singles. That's very Im important, and. I want to say that in these four things, there is fulfillment. So when we feel like, ah, something is missing, I want to get married, ah, ah, why am I still single, why am I still single? That means we are not fulfilling God's will in these four aspects of our lives. I brought out four, please. <laughs> so we are not fulfilling God's aspect in these four aspects of our lives. 
I don't know if you get. So when we start feeling, you know, when uh, um, the man was in the garden and he did all these things, he did not start saying for himself, ah, I need a woman. No. He wasn't the one that said it. It was God that looked at him and said, ah, this, he needs a help. He was fulfilled in what he's doing, but something was missing. He didn't know something was missing, but God knew something was missing. So it was his creator that knew that, ah, something is missing in this uh, 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 man's life. Let's add it and make his life easier. So Adam was doing what God wanted him to do freely. And in those assignments, in those, in those uh, instructions, lie fulfillment. Let's see the first thing. So from Genesis chapter 2 verse 1, 2 verse 8, sorry. It says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The first point I want to say as a single, you need to know the right position for you at the right time. God has a plan for us all. When God made man, he put him in the garden. He didn't make man and say, oh yeah, anything you want to do, do. No. He made man and puts man in the garden, right positioning, in a place. He said, okay, Ad, uh, Adam, man, stay here. This is where I want you to be. So for every one of us, God has a right position for each and every one of us. When I talk of right position, I mean where to stay, where to worship, where to stay, even geographically, you know, you know, where to be at the right time. You might want to, okay, I've always wanted to stay in the north. I've always want to, I wanted to stay in the north. I wanted to serve in the north. I wanted to do so many things in the north. But at that point, I didn't, I couldn't ask myself, is that where God wants me to be at the time? There is land everywhere, but apple trees can't grow everywhere. Rice cannot grow everywhere. So there is a right place for you to be at the right time. So as a single lady, you, 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 you can't get fulfillment jumping from one church to the other, jumping from one place to the other, jumping from one job to the other, jumping from one decision to the other. God has a perfect plan for you. But most times it's because we are not, you know, we are not patient enough to know what God wants for us. So we just keep flying. No, we stay in a church and, ah, I don't like the way this woman behaves. We move. I don't like the way we move. And we say that we keep moving. And in the moving, we still get troubled and still don't have that fulfillment. So my question to you this morning is, where you are, is it where God wants you to be? Right positioning. The right positioning at, at, right position at that point for the man God created provided everything for him. In the Garden of Eden, he didn't lack anything. He had food. He had, um, what? He had everything. God said, stay here. This is what you should do. Take care of everything. Take care of the animals. Name them. Blah, 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 blah. Do all this and do all that. It was when sin came in that he stepped out of where God placed for him. And it was difficult. So could it be that you're struggling because you're not where God wants you to be at that particular time as a single lady? So being single does not mean I can hop from one place to the other. I can go from one place to the other because I don't have a man or because I don't have um, a head that will tell me, sit down here, okay, this is what we want to do. No, that, that's not what it means. See, the, 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 uh, um, what will I call it now? The wrong knowledge we have about things is that when we get married, we'll stay in a place. That's not true. God did not create us to be perfect in marriage. He made us perfect. God created everything. He created man and saw that man was good. So he made me as a single perfect. So I bring that perfection into marriage. So it's not like I'm, 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 I will leave all my dirty habits and say, ah, when I marry, ah, the man I marry, say God said that, <laughs> that he, he should wash me by the water of the world and make me clean and all that and all that. Yes, that's what the scripture said. But the original plan f for us from God is not for us to leave our dirty uh, uh, habits and now jump into marriage and say, eh, eh, 
since we are now married, now let us. No. God made man. And he saw that man was perfect. He created and put everything in man. So right positioning, don't forget. Right positioning, where you are, is that where God wants you to be? You know, as little as God, where, where do you want me to walk? Where do you want me to serve? Where do you want me to worship? Where do you want me to live? God is interested in every nitty gritty of our lives. So he wants us to, to always come to him to know what is the right thing for him for you at a particular time. God does not make mistakes. He's a very deliberate God. He made one and put him in a garden. Secondly, purpose. When he made Adam, he put him in a garden. And he didn't put him in a garden without something. Okay, Adam, stay in the garden. Man, stay in the garden. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be sleeping? Am I supposed to be jumping? Am I supposed to be talking? Am I? He didn't allow him. To just say anything you want to do, do what? Ah, just do. Just, say, see animal, you can play with them, see tree, you can climb. No, he gave him a purpose in the garden. Now, the purpose I want to talk about is two sided physically and spiritually. He gave him a purpose. Hmm. So, young lady, what's your purpose? Are you just living life because, ah, now we just need to jive. Oh, hey, this life they need to live us two times. So, hey, after, hey, 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 hey. now the ones man they die. Oh, after that, nothing they happen again. We could live the life. Really, is that what God wants for you? Is that what God has planned for you? You don't just live life as though you know there is nothing. You know there is nothing for you to do. That's where the the depression comes in. When you're not busy doing what God wants you to do, that's where the trouble starts. But when you're busy doing what God wants you to do, you have a sense of fulfillment. Adam was doing man. I want to call him man. Man was doing exactly what God wants him to do. Okay, let's see. Genesis, still Genesis. Verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. This, the, the scripture repeated that the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend. Now with an extra duty. He didn't just put him there. He put him to tend and to keep it. That was his duty to tend the garden and to keep it. So nothing would have been wrong if God said, okay, man, just sit down there. I'll call my angels to be tending the garden and to, you know, keep it, you know, uh, the um, grasses, you know, cut them, you know, make them fine, you know, the animals, you know, to tend and to keep it. And know that he, God also gave him an instruction, name the animals. Whatever you give them, whatever name you give them, that's, it stands. So what are you doing? What's your purpose? Physically, what are you doing for humanity? Like seriously, you're just going to school to study anatomy and you come out and what is in your mind is that, ah, uh, 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 okay, I'm going to work here, I'm going to work here and get the money. And uh, Like seriously, that's not all that there is to it though. I, I, I bleed when I see people that just feel that there is nothing about life. Or there's nothing so important about making impacts in your circle. I'm not talking of world impact. You don't have to be the uh, uh, Okonjo, uh, 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 Ngozi. You don't have to be all those people. You just have to be the Sandra in your environment that people will say, Ah, this lady helped me. Even if it's one person. I know the, f the beautiful thing. God has placed everything inside of you for you to fulfill your purpose. God did not go to the man and ask him, um, do you know how to cut grass? He didn't ask him. He did not ask him, do you know how to help? Do you know how to pick eggs? He didn't ask him, do you know how to pack dung? No. He knew the man he created. He knew that the capabilities are in the man. So he just gave him an instruction. And the man was quick to obey. Tend it. Keep it. So 
he didn't need anybody to say do you do, do, do you know how this thing that god said now do you do you know how to do it it's because god has placed everything so for every purpose you find yourself doing or you feel an urge to do god has given you everything you need but most times we don't see it as a uh, um what's what's you know what's what's popping no 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 no. everybody wants to make money everyone's everybody wants to do business yes it's good to make money everybody wants to you know make it you know let them call you the happening babe you know you can buy your shoe you can buy your bags you know you can buy any designer bag you want to buy designer gowns you want to buy it's beautiful but hey lady where's the purpose you can't find fulfillment in wearing gucci you can't find fulfillment in wearing designer dresses. Where is your purpose? What are you supposed to do for your society? You can talk. Beautiful. That's the capacity God has given to you. What are you using your voice to do? That's physical, Leo. What are you using your voice to do? You can write. What are you using your hands to do? I can dance. What are you using your moves to do? I can cook. I can do this. What are you using your eh, 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 hands and all that to do? Then another aspect I want to talk about in purpose is work. God gave Adam a job. And in the job, he found his purpose, right? Yes. In the ten deeds and the everything and the everything. Do this, do this, do this. Work. Hey, young lady, you don't have to sit down and wait for a man to give you money. That's another side to it. There are some ladies that are just, they are not the, in the, the, the dependent ladies they want to get. And there are some single ladies that are just waiting. Ah, let me wait now. When somebody marry me now, ah, the person will buy me bag, the person will buy me shoe. Hey, what can you bring to the table? What can you bring to the table? Like I said, God has put everything that we need to make impact. He has put everything that we need to make, make impact. What can you bring to the table? I remember there was once, okay, I was going to see um, my husband's pastor when we did, when we were cutting. So I went to the house and um, um, my pastor then now, um, his son was writing a uh, um, junior work and he was having trouble with his mass. He was scared. So... I just said, okay, I can help now. That was my first time in the house. So I said, okay, let me help. Maths. Ah, I used to be very good in maths. So don't mind me. I used to be very good, like a student in maths. <laughs> maths, our father maths. So I, I was a bit scared. I said, well, I, 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 am I going to still remember maths? But I said, okay, let's try. The one I don't remember, I'll just leave it. Uh, that was how I helped. So at every point in time, what are you doing? Like, seriously, are you a liability? What are you doing? At that point, I was able to help. Okay, these are, these are, these. that's how we did it all. We did till 12, woke up around 4, because we we're supposed to travel, come back, uh, go back to, from Ibadan to Abakliki. All these places are in Nigeria. <laughs> so, that day. So, I woke up and we helped. And beautifully, I was even remembering all the things I forgot. So, wherever you go, you have something. Wherever you go, you have something. So don't sit down and say, eh, you're waiting for somebody to give you money or to make your hair. You're waiting for some Learn skills. Ladies, learn skills. Proverbs 31 woman, learn skills. One skill is not enough. I'm not saying learn the skill to come and be CEO of tailoring, CEO of uh, hairdressing, CEO of baking. No, 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 no. Learn those skills. There are some skills I learned. I, when people ask me, I say it's domestic use. <laughs> like, for example, I learned to sew. But I'm not so perfect in sewing. When you ask me, I say it's domestic use. Well, when I have my babies, I'll be saying clothes for them. Not the male ones. So they should go and be their father. They should go and look for their father's tailor. But the females, I, I can just do something. I will dress. I will dance together. I will go to church. I will go to anywhere I want to go to. Just... Domestic. Maybe if we want to take it further, we can take it further. I learned how to make hair because I want to make my children's hair. To get. And I, I, I really have the flair for little, little things. Now, you don't have to be me. 
I have the flavor for little little things. Okay, how to make liquid soap, how to make the um um other control, how to make custard, how to make you know, let's just okay, can we try pizza? Can we try shawarma? Can we try spring roll? Can we try this? Can we try that? Can we try that? That's that's me. Just for a home use. Oh. <laughs> so what can you bring to the table? There's a woman I know, she doesn't know how to cook, she doesn't know how to watch, like she's lazy to you. But do you know why her husband likes her? The husband is a CEO of a very large enterprise. The husband did not go to school, but the lady went to school. The, the lady is a financial guru. Like she's the one that handles her husband's finances. Ah! So the husband does not joke with how. So he will employ housemaid for the house. But what is in his head? His money. My wife needs to come back. And with the help of that woman, his business has grown. What can you bring to the table? If hairdressing is not your own decision, what is your own eh, 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 input? Let it be that you go to a place and your impact is felt. The man was in the garden and the animals felt his impact. He was not sleeping and waiting for God to come and eh, 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 wake him up. Stand up. Okay, do this. He wasn't waiting for God to come down for him to ask him, okay, God, today I did not eat, oh, ah, uh, I cannot climb the tree. Send monkey to climb the tree for me now. It's one thing for God to give an instruction and it's one thing for you to get up and walk at it. So don't sit down there and say, I cannot do anything. There's nothing I can do. There's no job. There's no. Start with the little things you can do. Okay, I'm married. I came to Ibado, western part of Nigeria. And you know that kind of thing. You're just new. I didn't, I never, the only person that I used to say, I know is my husband and one of my cousins that stay here. So, hey, look for something. I said, okay, what can I do like this now? I can cook. I can cook. It's okay. In the West, they really don't know so much about the other type of food. I said, okay, let's make our own different. So I will not give you a wedu. I will not give you begiri. You already have your begiri and a wedu. So can we do egusi? Can we do obono? Can we do white soup? Can we do afang soup? Can we do any kaikong soup? Do you understand? Can we do stews? Other than the normal stews they do here, like the pepper stew and all that. Can we do stews? And, whoa! I said, okay, that is it. In as much as it's not being easy, starting is not easy. But um, I have a sense of fulfillment that I have something to bring to the table. So if you ask me, what do I do? And I bake too. If you ask me, what do I do? I say, okay, I can cook. So you say, eh, hey, oh, I can, you can cook. Can you bake a uh, bottle soup for me? Ah, we plenty money, of course. You, It's not real. It's plenty money. <laughs> I'll do for you. Four liters, six liters, or for an occasion. Anyhow you want it. That is what I can bring to the table. So I might not be like you that know how to write. I'm not a content creator. So I cannot come and be say, ah, I, I design websites. I design this. I design that. And that's not my calling. But there are some ladies that that's their calling. Work, work on it. Work at it. Use it. Don't sit down there and say there is nothing to do. If I tell that, say, okay, there's nothing to do. Husband, you have seen. Not it, not it, there's nothing to do. But God gives God has given you what to do, so do it. Don't sit down. Spiritual purpose, what, what, what is your impact to people around you spiritually? What kind of presence do you have? What kind of presence do you exude? What kind of presence do you give out? Are you the type that people come around you and they get depressed? Like, people come around you and they are just angry. Why can't you be that kind of, that person that God has has made you to be that ah whenever you come into a place even the depressed will just start jumping and smiling you just you just notice that god has given you the ability to talk someone out of depression to bring someone out of a chaos to bring someone out of mental uh, uh, slavery do it there you find your your fulfillment my dear so i talked about right positioning i've talked about purpose you know and these things are beautiful. God has orchestrated them for I and you. So don't don't sit down and just wait for a a a, a, a mother to fall from heaven. You know, I'm waiting. You know, ah, waiting, waiting for mother. There's nobody. You're just expecting one bundle of 
uh, uh, money to fly from heaven. No, God has given you everything that can produce more than one bundle of money. So with this, to this the first session, these two points, I want us to go back and think about it. Where am I? Where I am right now? Is it where God wants me to be? Like, okay, so as I'm here now, okay, if this is where God wants me to be, what does God want me to be doing? To get money, to make impact. That's the two sides I talk about, talked about. You're here, okay, you're in Lagos. What does God want you to do? What kind of job God want, does God want you to do? Okay, uh, is there any other thing God wants you to do to make money? <laughs> because my dear, if it's God's instruction, it might not be easy, but you will see the money there. But most times we are not even patient. We are not patient. But God will help us. So, um, I talked about purpose. Yes, making money and making impact. See, when God instructs you to do a thing, it might be difficult, but that's where your, your, your blessing is. So. But the problem is that, are we patient enough? So if God says, hey, stand up, start up a cooking business, <laughs> you might start first day, nobody will answer you, second day, nobody will answer you. Ever will just be, maybe people just be, do you cook? Eh, hey, oh yeah, let us test. <laughs> and they'll be testing and testing, I don't want to patronize you. But hey, stay there. Do you think Adam did not demand that God put in um, hey, the Garden of Eden, Eden did not see challenges? Can you imagine being in an animal kingdom? They want to understand you. The animals then and now, they are, they are not different. They want to understand you. Even normal goats. Ask goats to come here. Goat is moving the other way. Except you tie the goat, drag the goat. At some point, ah, he would have said, ah. Which kind of thing did God? Because he says he put, the says God put in him. It's not the says that it's a goat. So which kind of which kind of thing? Now nah, God, I don't want to do it again. No, he stayed at it. He stayed put. So with all the smell and all the things, you know, the goats will be bleating here. Uh, sheep will be here. This one will be doing this one. This one will be doing this one. This one will be doing this one. He still stayed put. I still was doing what. God asked him to do until God found a spot for him, which is the woman, and blessed him. And he'll be like, oh, finally, somebody that understands me, somebody that can reason on the same level. That's what God does. So as you go back, think, ask yourself, ask yourself, am I where God wants me to be? Okay. Ah, okay, let's assume I'm where God wants me to be. Is this what God wants me to do at this particular time? It's important, young lady. So we'll see you on my next video. God bless you.